Hello and welcome back to the channel. I'm Martin from Martin and Helen's Treks. And if you don't know us, we're travel and street photographers that spend most of our time or as much of our time as we can traveling in our motorhome in Europe and the UK, photographing scenes that we come across and documenting the life that we, we observe. Now this video is something a little bit different for me because I'm gonna do a product review, which is unusual for me, as you'll probably gather. I only really do product reviews in two circumstances. One is if it's particularly interesting to me, and I'm talking about it at a personal level, or if I think it'll be interesting to you as a viewer, and I don't take on products that fit outside that category. I'm no doubt at this point you're asking why would a telephoto lens be of interest to me as a traveller? Well, the, thing, the simple thing is, is most travellers are photographers as well, and most photographers these days take their pictures on an iPhone. Now, the iPhone itself is not the only uh, smartphone out there, I realise, but it is one of the biggest market holders, and this particular product is designed for the iPhone. And it gives you the ability to supercharge your iPhone to capture those better shots from better areas that you go to at a relatively reasonable cost, and I'll get into that in a minute. Now it's a mute point whether this is a teleconverter or a telephoto, I'm not going to really get into that today. So let's get started. Um, unboxing this thing I have to say was quite a pleasure because it comes in quite a nice box. It's, um, it comes in a case that's got a D-ring that will clip on your belt if you, if you want to do that. A nice um, pouch, it's all very well presented. I have to say when I first looked at this I thought the, the, the um, lens caps might be a bit fiddly but, but they're not. I, worked with them well and to hold this thing in your hand uh, is really quite a joy it's a, a high-tech machined aluminium produced it's got um, proper glasses it's got an optimal zoom you can and it feels just a really really nice product to have in your hand and so what also comes with this product is an iPhone case now the iPhone case has to match your model of iPhone my iPhone is an iPhone 15 Pro and as you can see on the back, there are three lenses. There is the micro lens at the top, which we'll not be talking about. There is the normal lens here, uh, and there's also the telephoto lens, which is towards this side. And I'm going to refer to these as the big lens and the little lens, just for the sake of avoiding technical speak. Because like I said before, I think this is going to be aimed at the type of photographers that just want to take a picture and don't want to discuss technical details of photography or for all day long. And so this, obviously fits into your, on your iPhone itself, this case, and then it screws nicely onto the lens. Now I started with this, as you'd expect, on the smaller of the two lenses, or the, the, the normal lens, rather than the iPhone's telephoto. Um, simply because when I first got this, Sunmark said, look, this needs to be, if you use it on the big lens, it needs to be on a tripod to avoid camera shake. And I can see why, because it does actually add quite a bit of weight to your, to your phone. Incidentally, there are other accessories you can buy from the company and, and third-party agents which provide a grip which actually then starts to convert the whole iPhone into a rather more traditional camera, which may or may not be of interest here. Now, the cost of this thing is about $160 uh, exchange rate supply, of course. Look, we've got to make a point here and say that whilst $160 is not by no means uh, a cheap amount of money, and, and I get that, it's not a £2,000, £3,000 dollars whatever denomination of currency that you, you operate in, uh, top of the range lens. Um, so consequently, we've got to make sure that we compare um, things properly. So there's no point in me showing you a, a telephoto shot taken with a £4,000 Sony lens and compare it to this because it's not going to work. And so, but also at the same time, that's not the market that this is aimed at. 
but stand by on the quality because I think you'll be surprised. So let's talk about why I'm interested in this camera. Well, I've just recently been through a process of downsizing. I've got rid of all the heavy cameras, all the heavy lenses, and I've bought a smaller, more compact camera, a Leica Q3, with a specialist um, purpose in mind, really, which is around street photography and travel photography. And so it fits nicely in my hand, it fits nicely into a small bag, and it's really easy to use. I've also gone down, made the decision to get rid of the Sony ZV-1 video camera and I'm using my iPhone Pro 15 for video work. Again, because it's smaller and I carry my phone anyway and it's in my pocket. Even the drone, I've gone from a bigger drone to a smaller drone and everything's about compact and lightweight and mobility now. And so this interested me because when having gone through that process, the telephoto aspect is not there anymore. And so occasionally I just need to reach a little bit further. So this is why this has been such a of interest to me and I think you'll be interested for the same way is that if you're a, a regular travel snapper of, on your iPhone and you're just going to see something that's a little bit different away you're going to want to use it it's also worth pointing out that this is an optical zoom not a digital zoom and the difference is without getting too technical is that with an optical zoom it's a mechanical zoom you use the actual lens itself to um, focus whereas on your iPhone it's a digital zoom and of the two an optical zoom is always a better product normally now, just before we get started, I ought to say that I, the Sandmark recommend that you use a third-party camera app on your iPhone because the native app, the Apple phone, has a little bit of a quirk in it. And it can be, it can be overcome, but it does seem to be an issue when you put the um, lens onto the phone. The micro facility on the lens native app seems to engage. Now, you can just disengage it and carry on and use the lens without any problem but it's something that uh, they recommended. So I did download the Pro Camera app and also the Blackmagic Camera app for video. Now the Blackmagic Camera app is free. The Pro Camera app, I think it's cost about $12, something like that. So here we are inside the Pro Camera app. Fairly straightforward to get to around really, but uh, I've got the uh, telephoto attached to the normal camera, but you can press on it as normal for autofocus hold and lock for uh, exposure lock and focus lock if you want to and then of course you can fine tune with the optical zoom on the lens what i particularly like about this app is that you can press the manual focus and you can actually alter the shutter speed now i find that particularly with this uh, lens being a little bit uh, heavier with the iphone that to turn up the shutter speed is extremely useful in terms of avoiding camera shake it's quite a good learning uh, opportunity and there's plenty of YouTube videos showing you how to use it. It's quite good. Moving to the Black uh, Magic Cam again, it's a straightforward video app really. Enables you to uh, do a few different things, maybe uh, certainly video in uh, a higher quality video format. But it's just like before, you just press the button and record. But I say I'd probably recommend putting this on, an, on a tripod if you're video recording and uh, You'll see from the results coming up that it's been quite uh, quite productive if you do that. So let's have a look at some images. The first images I'm going to show you are of the bell tower of the cathedral in Cordoba. And they're taken with the iPhone without the Sandmark telephoto lens attached. Just to give you the difference between the normal lens and the telephoto lens that's fitted on the iPhone. Now the second images I'm showing you now, the first one on the left is with the Sandmark telephoto lens attached to the normal iPhone lens port. And the one on the right shows you the, the image that you get when you attach the Sandmark telephoto lens to the telephoto lens on the iPhone. Now the next photos are again in, in Cordoba, but this time across back at the cathedral. And these are the two from the iPhone. And then again with the telephoto times six on the main lens on the iPhone and then attached to the telephoto lens on the iPhone. Again, I think you'll agree that they're reasonably crisp considering the distance. Now this picture is of the Naval Museum in Seville. And again, the two photos that you're looking at are taken with the iPhone main lens and the iPhone Time 3 telephoto. And this is taken by attaching the Sandmark telephoto Time 6 lens to the main lens on the iPhone. And I think you'll agree this is a, 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 another decent photo really. Now this photo is taken in Figueira de Foz in Portugal and again on the left hand side here you've got a straightforward shot from the iPhone main lens without any telephoto inbuilt options 
on the right hand side you get a shot where I've attached the Time6 Sandmark telephoto to the main lens on the iPhone. Now there's a degree of natural bokeh with this lens and it shows you here what you get if you actually use it in, a, in portrait. Uh, you see the general sharpness of the person in, in the image and then it obviously blurs the background as it focuses around the actual subject. And again, still in Portugal, the first lens on the left hand side is a distant shot across to the clock tower with the iPhone in portrait mode, just using the main iPhone lens. And the next one is what happens if you put the main, the time six teleconverter onto the main iPhone lens, you get a, a closer up version. On the left, you get the standard shot from the iPhone and then the shot that you get when you attach the time six telephoto lens. You can see these again are reasonably crisp and I think you'd accept these as certainly as uh, social media images. The last place I took this camp, this uh, lens to try was in Porto. Now this is not a, an iPhone shot, this is a shot with my Leica camera. Just to give you the scene setting really and to give you some concept of what the scene looks like with a premium camera and a premium lens. Um, and also to set some context to the photos that are coming up when I use the iPhone and the telephoto lens. So you can see here that once I uh, attach the Time6 telephoto lens, we get some reasonably good looking shots close in. So let's look at some video. And I was, I have to confess, relatively surprised by the quality of the video, especially when the iPhone and lens was put onto a tripod. Looking straight down the Plaza de España in Seville, and you can see it's quite a distance to the bottom. When I put on the uh, Time6, six teleconverter you can see how much it pulls in and then subsequently what I did was I just wound up the distances using the time six teleconverter and the normal camera option and then screwing it into the iPhone's uh, telephoto capacity and you can see this is it at its most expanded and I think that that is quite good I've not deployed any sharpening techniques or anything like that this is just straight out the camera it looks, uh, I think, quite good. And this is, um, again, just shots of people enjoying themselves. And of course, for all you wildlife lovers, just to prove that you can take pictures of animals with it. And you can see as well that there's some challenging light here. Some bright sunlight, some shades. And it seems to do quite well in my view. So this last shot here of these canoeists was taken again with the Time 6 on the biggest lens on the iPhone, handheld this time. So having looked at the images and the video, I hope that you'll agree with me that this is probably a good asset to have in your bag and I'm certainly going to carry it. Now, for the purposes of full disclosure, I ought to say that Sandmark have sent me this lens. I haven't been paid to endorse it or to give it a favourable reference, and I'm under no obligation to report favourably on the lens. It's just a straightforward, honest product review, as far as I'm concerned. So, in summary, I think this really bang for your buck produces quite a good result. For the money and the expense outlay, if you're looking for something uh, that's going to benefit you from a telephoto point of view with an iPhone, I think it's worth the money. I think the results are sharp enough, certainly for social media, uh, and that's where most of the people who take iPhone shots place their images. Some will print, but even then, I don't see that as being too much of a problem, particularly with the later iPhones when you've got a higher megapixel count. So if I was being picky, I would say that it slightly makes the iPhone seem a bit more cumbersome, but you get used to it. I find that I hold it on the lens itself and use it that way or that way, and it works quite well and also the cost of it. Um, I realise that an iPhone user, another $160 on top of the cost of an iPhone might be an issue. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Uh, I'm certainly going to give this a try and I've enjoyed using it. I shall keep it with me as, as we travel. Thanks very much, Martin out.